What's up YouTube? How are you doing today? Chana D, your techno dad here, and in today's video we're going to be checking out the Harmony 650. This is a universal remote at a very low price and it's something you need to check out. We're going to get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now, if you're new to the channel and you want to learn about 4K, home theater, and audio products, and how to set them up properly, you should consider subscribing because I'm here to help. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remote controls. That's what we're talking about today. In particular, how many remote controls do you have just laying around? I'll show you a picture of what I got just stashed around my living room. Now, as you can see by this picture, there's a whole lot of stuff. Got a couple of LG remotes. I uh, got a Parasound remote, a Yamaha, a Den, and an Oppo, a Sony, all kinds of stuff. Now, if you notice, I already have two Harmony remotes on the top and bottom. Now, the bottom one is the Harmony One, which I've had since about 2005, 2006, somewhere around that time period. And the one on the top is the Harmony Touch, which I bought about two years ago. It was on sale at Crutchfield from $200 down to $99, so I picked it up. Now, even though I have these remotes, my wife still doesn't like either of the two Harmony remotes. And so I decided to go ahead and pick up their, it's not their cheapest one, it's just above that. It was running at about 70 or $80 uh, MSRP, but is down below 40. I think it's about 38 or $39 on Amazon, links down in the description. So I got this just to kind of show you guys how easy it is to set one of these things up and also to appease the wife because she is the one watching TV the most in the house. So enough talking, let's get into the unboxing and check out some features. Oh yeah. All right, here we are with the unboxing. They have this easy remove back portion here. So you don't need any scissors or blades or anything like that. So let's get these scissors out of here. We've got some instructions, USB to micro USB cable for syncing with the My Harmony app. And that's how you get the remote set up and all that kind of cool stuff. Here's the thing though. I have tons of these cables like laying around, but when you don't use the cable that came with the Harmony 650, the My Harmony app does not see the remote. So it's very important that you keep the cable, the one that came with the Harmony, whichever one you happen to buy, because the other ones are just not gonna work. It's strange, I know, it should be just a cable and should work, but it doesn't, so there you go. Make sure you know where this cable's at couple of double-A batteries. All right, so here we are at the top of the remote and these uh, magenta buttons at the top are the activity buttons. Now these buttons kind of run macro, so it runs multiple button presses with the press of a button. Say like you want to watch TV, it'll turn on your TV, it'll turn on your cable box, it'll turn on your AV receiver, change your AV receiver to the TV input and change your TV to whatever input your receiver is going into. And there you go. So it's all set up and then like if you want to go to watch a movie, it'll change inputs and turn on your, you know, your Blu-ray player or whatever it is you have. And just below that, we have a screen and soft buttons. And the soft buttons will select whatever function is on the screen at that point in time. At the bottom of the screen, there are left and right buttons for multiple pages of specific functions for that specific device. Below that, we have the menu area, which basically has everything you need for like the regular menu options on multiple devices. And then below that are the color-coded buttons. Moving on, we have the main channel area. This is where you'll find your volume up and down, your main navigation area with the OK button in the middle. And we also have a mute and the return or back button, whatever you wanna call that. Below this section, we have the transport area. That's your play, pause, rewind, fast forward, stop and record. And at the very bottom, we have the number pad for you to type in all the numbers and well, you know what it's for. I don't need to explain that. Now, the one cool thing I did find out about this remote that I did not know before is that all the buttons illuminate. So there we go. Pretty basic unboxing. The features are pretty straightforward. Everything you might, you know, find on a remote control. 
you know, you guys have seen a remote control, nothing new here. Now, what we need to do is set it up. So we need to jump on the computer. We need to download the MyHarmony app. We need to plug in the remote to the computer. And one last thing, before we start with this whole setup, we need to write down all the model numbers of the devices that we want to control. Okay, so once you have that done, we're ready to go. So let's get on the computer and do it. All right, so we downloaded the software. Now we're gonna click add remote. The remote is plugged in. We get a welcome screen here. Let's set up your Harmony 650. Click next. All right, here it says you already own a Harmony remote. Do you wanna copy the settings? And no, we do not, okay? So we wanna go with a new setup. All right, so first let's start off with the TV. So let's type in LG, and then we gotta click LG. Uh, type in here, E6 OLED and add. All right, here's some options. Um, we'll just pick the top one, 65 ES E6T. It's supposed to be E6P, but whatever. I'm sure the remote code is probably the same. All right, let's add another device. Let's go with the Sony, the Blu-ray player, the uh, UBP X700. So I'm gonna type in just X700 to see if it'll find it. And there it is. Sony UBP X700. And that's pretty cool because, you know, that thing's pretty new still, like only like, what, a month, a month old. Next, we're gonna do the Yamaha amplifier. I'm just gonna type in V583 and let's see if the rest pops up. Yep, there it is, RX V583, hit okay. And just continue on like so, Microsoft, Xbox One X, add it. Oh, I guess that's all I needed to know. Let's keep going, what about um, Apple? What about Apple? That's right, I just got that Apple 4K TV or Apple TV 4K. Oh, there it is, I found it. Okay. That's it for now, just hit done. And now it's gonna kind of give you an idea of what an activity is. So we're going to set up a couple of activities here. Let's go next, watch TV. All right, so we're gonna select the devices that are gonna be turned on during that activity, okay? Which device do you wanna control the volume? Well, we want the Yamaha receiver, so continue. Which inputs are used to watch TV? HDMI 1, that's, that's on the TV. So hit next here. All right. We're gonna choose HDMI one here. Hit next. Which input should your Yamaha be set to to watch TV? And it's HDMI one. Next. So now we confirm and we move on. Click add activity. All right, let's do play a game. Let's go to next. And let's call it something different. Let's just call it use Xbox because sometimes we just use it for streaming like Voodoo, if I want an Atmo soundtrack or whatever. So here we are again, the three items that are gonna be on. Control the volume with which device, the Yamaha. TV should be set to, again, HDMI 1. Go to next. Yamaha AVR should be set to HDMI 2. Go to next. And that's it. So you hit done, and then we can add another activity. Let's do watch a movie. Next, watch a movie, next, that's fine. We're gonna have the Sony DVD, the LG TV, and the Yamaha turn on. Control the volume with the Yamaha. Input for the TV should be HDMI one, hit next. Input for the AVR should be HDMI three, next. And those are our three devices, and that's what's turning on. And it tells you what inputs you know are under the device, so that's cool. So now let's add that Apple TV. Let's watch Apple TV. Go to next. That's a fine title. And 
those are the three devices again which one controls volume what's the you know input on the tv it's going to be hdmi 1 and what's the input on the avr it's going to be hdmi 4 and those are the three devices and their inputs all right um to add another one watch smart tv Okay, so for this, I know that the AVR needs to be set to TV. There's a special TV setting. So volume again is gonna be the AVR. And do, 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 we're gonna collect, select smart TV for what the TV needs to be set on. And for the audio, here it is, it's like a scene. There it is, scene TV. That's what's gonna use the optical input for the audio coming from the TV. And you can see all the like inputs over there on the two items that are gonna be used. Hit done. And then that's pretty much it. So let's hit done again. So now you can customize the three activity buttons that are on the top of the remote. So we have watch TV for watch TV, listen to music for use Xbox, and watch a movie for watch a movie. I think that's fine. You know, this is one of those things where you can't change what's written on the remote. Just as long as I know is listen to music is use Xbox Live or Xbox One, we're okay. All right, so now we hit sync. So it asks you to uh, select the language for your remote, English for right now. I'm not changing it anytime soon though. And the sync is in progress. So we'll let that sync go. All right, sync is 100% complete. Now go to finish and you're ready to use the remote. All right, so here we are using the remote. I turn off the assistant usually because I don't need any more. And you can see the activities here. Currently we're on watch TV. Now we just hit watch Apple TV. And there we go. We see Apple TV turn up and I am controlling Apple TV with the remote. Now, let's go and press the watch a movie button. And that should bring us to the Sony UBP-X700 home screen, which it does. And as you can see, I'm controlling that as well with the remote. Now let's go back to the uh, watch TV button and just kind of point it at everything and boom, we're back to the direct TV perfect now there is one thing that I wanted to do because when I turn everything off it turns off the cable box and my wife hates that so we want to make sure the cable box is always on now there is a way to do that so we're gonna jump into how to do that and also one of the other things I wanted to do was to kind of show you how to change around uh, stuff on the screen it says one guide here in the upper left hand corner and I want to put the Xbox home button there or the Xbox button there because I don't use that other feature I use the Xbox home button a lot and then the next thing I want to do if you notice on the screen there is no a because the a is the ok button that's in the directional pad area but I want to do is set it up so that the back or return button the physical button is the B button okay so I'm going to show you how to do that right now as we get into some advanced setup. All right, so here we are in the home screen and we need to go to devices. Okay, and we need to scroll over to get the direct TV DVR and go to change device settings. Well, what do you want to change? We want to change the power settings. My device doesn't turn on or off correctly. That's the one that we need to change. Okay, now click next. And there it is, second option. I want to leave this device powered on all the time. Okay, now we click next. And then it asks you, how do you turn your DirecTV on and off? I press the same button for on and for off. Let's select that one and go to next. All right, so here's the uh, command screen for the power settings. Click add command. From the drop down, I just picked power toggle and click finish. So we're gonna sync it and move on to the next item. Okay, so we're back at the home screen and we go to buttons. 
All right, so first in the top section here that says screen options, what we wanna do on the screen is swap the one guide with the Xbox button. So we're gonna click on the drop down and select use Xbox. Click go. And now we can see all the three pages of the LCD screen. So I'm just gonna click and drag Xbox and place it where one guide is and click and drag one guide over here to eject. And there we have it. I just swapped the Xbox and the one guide buttons on the LCD screen. So now we're just gonna hit okay. All right, so now in the remote buttons section, we are going to click use Xbox and then click on go. Now what we need to do is scroll down till we get to the back button or the previous button. Click on that. Now we have to go to the right and select a device from the pull down or the drop down. Make sure you're on commands, of course. And Microsoft Games Console is what we want. And then B, and we have to click and drag this onto the button itself. And now it says command assigned B. Perfect, this is exactly what we're looking for. So let's go over to OK. And now we need to sync. And as you can see here on page one on the use Xbox, we have the Xbox button and we have one guide here on page three. So we swapped it, perfect. The previous or back button has been assigned to the letter B or the B button on like a Xbox remote control. Sweet. And of course the DirecTV box does not turn off when we hit the all off button. Awesome, we're good to go now. All right, so there you have it. We have your basic setup, we have your like advanced setup. It's not really that advanced. I mean, you just have to think about what you need the remote to do and just kind of find out where it is in the My Harmony app so you guys can get it to the remote and you're done. Now, some of the other remotes are a little bit more sophisticated. They cost a lot more and you're gonna have a lot more options. So, you know, if that's you, definitely check them out. I put links to everything down in the description, even the more expensive ones. So you can get one that fits your budget or one where you wanna like control the lights in your house and all that kind of stuff. They got everything covered, okay? But for all you that are just kind of into this or getting into this and you do wanna get rid of all your remotes and just stick to one remote, this is definitely a good option. I mean, at $40, it's a no brainer. And the funny part is my wife likes this one much better than the ones that cost like five times as much. Now I did just walk you through how to set it up, but if you still have any questions, please leave them in the comments or hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you like to use the most. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, go ahead, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad and I'll see you next time. Oh,